1 John 2, the 18th verse. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that the Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. The Antichrist and his spirit are here today. I'm in Carabell. They're here in Carabell. They're in Washington, D.C. They're all over the world. They are where you are. The Antichrist and his spirit, anything opposing Christ, anti-Christ, against Christ. How many times do you hear someone provide an example of a sin while claiming it is not a sin? Look at the moral conduct of people in our world today. Look at what was known, accepted as sin even 30 years ago, and now the same things are going on except more rampant and more widespread. And all of a sudden, it's declared that that's all right. That's not sin. Listen, if the Bible, which is God's word, and you know what the problem is, I think, is there are many people, a growing number in the world today who do not accept the Bible as God's word. It is God's word. That's where it starts. Declares It declares something that is sin. Believe me, it is sin. If the Bible says it's sin, it is sin. Whether it was yesterday or tomorrow, it is sin. Anyone who proclaims that what the Bible notes as sin is not a sin is proclaiming a false teaching, and the spirit of the Antichrist is working through such proclamations. Brothers and sisters, children of God, Jesus is coming back, and it's soon that he's coming back for his church. The Bible is plain that Jesus is coming back and he went to prepare a place for us and he he says he's coming back. Why would he be preparing a place if he's not coming back after? So we know that he is. The same train that would take us to heaven in years past is the same one that will do it today. The same train and director who would take our granddaddy to heaven, our grandmother to heaven, is the same one that's going to direct us to heaven. And we just need to get in the train. And the, when we get in Jesus, we are in the train. Let's be blessed and listen to the monies as they sing an old timey song that I love and used to sing it a lot at a country church I went to. Have you heard it recently? Life's Railroad to Heaven. It's like a mountain railroad With an engineer that's brave We must make the run successful From the cradle to the grave Watch the curves, the hills, the tunnels Never fall
soul Spanning Jordan, swelling tide You behold the Union Depot Into which your trail will guide There you'll meet the superintendent Let's go a little further. In 2 Timothy, the third chapter, in the first five verses. 2 Timothy. Now, I know this was Paul talking to a young pastor, Timothy, getting him prepared to continue being that pastor that he was. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Bible says, Paul told Timothy, from such turn away. The first five verses of the third chapter of 2 Timothy. Spend some time looking at each of those. And um, I don't think you'll have a problem seeing that we are surrounded by those today. And perhaps we've been affected by it. And we have been impacted by it. Think about all of these things and the answer or the response that I have is, wow. Here we are today. Lovers of themselves. Have you ever heard I did it my way? I can do it my way. I can be anything I want to be. How about that? Have you heard that lately? I have. I've heard it many times. How many selfies have you seen lately? Fifteen years ago, how many times did you see somebody taking their own picture? Things are subtle, but yet they're so visible. Money talks. Two, greed is rampant. The love of money is the root of all evil. Much evil in the world today can be traced to greed. It's not the money, it's the love of money. Egos, they're out of control. Look what I've done. Mine's much better than yours. You need to quit unless you can do better than that. I know what my mother said and taught, but today's a different world. Nobody's ever given me anything. I earned everything that I have. If it feels good, I enjoy it. It is good. Terrible indications of the society in which we live. We boast. Pride is a big thing for us. Blasphemy, we take credit for what is God and what he's done. Disobedient to parents, and, and sometimes this is not very subtle. Have you ever been to a grocery store or to any public place and you've seen 
children that the parents absolutely could not or would not control and they'd be slapping that or or saying bad things I, that just breaks my heart i feel i feel bad about that because that shouldn't be people are unthankful and that's one of the things that i've really been convicted of lately and it is i need to be thankful for what god has provided me because he's provided me a lot just as he has provided you unholy you know recently i felt led to do some studying about being holy but up until then it's been a long time when people just didn't even want to talk about being holy it's so foreign to the way we are today in verse 3 the first thing it mentions is without natural affection i don't know how much detail is required there i don't think very much natural affection that's the way it's supposed to be because of our nature and god made us but have you seen the things that are going on today in the name of being all right acceptable god blessed if it's not in the bible as a blessing of god then it's not blessed of god truce breakers I remember a day, and I'm not saying that, you know, old days are all good. They weren't. But there was a time when in South Alabama where I lived, and this is something I observed, and I heard men talking about it. If they gave somebody their word, that was it. They didn't need anything else. They would die before they broke their word. Now we can get all kind of legal documents and still go and not honor it. False accusers, that's rampant. You, you uh, hear it all the time about somebody making some false accusation. Even it goes to the law, even to get people arrested. And in some cases, years later, the person who claimed it confesses, oh, I made that up, it was a lie. We get so carried away in our own desires that it doesn't even make sense to us. And when somebody else is doing good and people are recognizing them in positive ways, it's easy for people to be jealous of that. It's easy for us to be high-minded. Oh, I'm not going to be affected with them. I'm not going to be hanging around those people because I might be affected by them in a bad way. Like that man prayed in the in the church where the uh, parable in Luke was thank you Lord for me not being like those people and like this one and lovers of pleasure have you ever seen the money that's spent on pleasure and seeking pleasure and I can't even oh, I could begin to name it but it would be a forever list of the things people invest big money in just so they could have a good time and and good times in that manner usually don't last over a season as soon as the trend changes then i got to get me another one like that now that's about people we can see christians too but those are things we identify with the world but paul didn't leave the church out he said this be aware and get out from among them Turn away from them, those that have a form of godliness. They pretend to be godly. They pretend to be sincere as a church of God, but they deny the actual power of God. And Paul told Tim, Timothy, from such turn away. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming back soon. I want to look in the 21st chapter of Luke and read three or four verses beginning with 25. And listen to this. Hear these stories about the aliens who used to be on earth. and You see these movies about the 
cataclysmic uh, ending of the earth with the asteroid that's coming down to destroy earth and we're figuring out how we can redirect it. Luke 21 beginning with verse 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh have you ever heard about climate change have you ever seen people get so concerned about climate change and there's some reality to it i'm not saying it's not true but all the threats to our earth and our environment including attacks from aliens and from asteroids are being promoted publicized and people are told to be prepared and how can you prepare for that earthquakes in unusual places I know a couple of years ago, at Casey for one, Casey Roberts, uh, every time it seemed like I went to her place of business, there had just been a new earthquake in a different part of the world, even in the United States, even down in the South. And we were thinking, God is speaking. He was. He was. What about the hurricanes with the powerful strength that we've seen in recent years? God speaking to us. We can say it's climate change. And, and however God does, it's up to him. Whether he uses man or not, he doesn't have to. But what are we going to do? Who is, I think about this, talking about God. Who is a human being that you would even pay attention to in God? But you do. He loves us. The best preparation we could have to a cataclysmic end of this world is be in the arms of Jesus. We can get all of the programs we want to to be prepared, but it's in Jesus where we are safe. In 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, verses 2 and 3, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child. The woman knows that it's coming. And then, here it is, and they shall not escape. What have we done in recent years? Government has organized it has trained, it has prepared and appointed expert leaders to prepare mankind for the unexpected and yet predicted challenges to life in our day, like bomb threats, like hurricanes, like terrorist events. The preparedness proclaimers assure us that we are ready. We are as prepared as we can be for safety. God will always strive with mankind in their sins. Our preparedness is of no value in opposition to God's potential actions. We are no match for God. Now, does that mean we're not to prepare? No, it means we are to prepare. What is to be the central theme of our preparedness? God. Who directs our path? God. Who do we acknowledge? God. In all our ways, God. 
Now, God will, he is a merciful God. And there have been many times over the generations that he could have come back. And he hasn't come back yet. The Holy Spirit is here. He hasn't gone. No, and, and Jesus Christ is waiting to come back. But you know what? The Bible tells us he will not always strive with man. There's a time when God has had enough. And when that time comes, when God gives a signal, Jesus is coming back for his church. There's nothing we can do about that except be prepared. If we're not prepared, we're going to be left behind. And the way I see the Bible, that means the people left behind are going to be in for some rough, rough, rough times. And I know this, that the Bible talks about the Jesus coming back to earth in final victory. And he's not that little baby. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And the people who are left behind who are trying to make it in this world satisfying the Antichrist are going to be defeated as the Antichrist is defeated, as the devil is defeated by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, my Jesus Christ. You're Jesus Christ if you're a child of God. In Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 14th verse, And this gospel of the kingdom shall it be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. God's word is being spread and taught in every corner of the world today in various means in various ways now only god knows when everybody has heard and he can demonstrate his love for mankind through the nature that he has created but the end is coming we got we walk around today many people walk around as if there is no end the bible says then shall the end come he will not always Strive with the sins of man. In Luke 21, chapter, uh, chapter 21, verse 28, And when these things begin to come pass, come to pass, when we see that all of the things have been done and Jesus is about to come back, the Bible says, look up. Lift up your heads. Not the government, not the mom and daddy, Look up. Why? For your redemption draweth nigh. There's Jesus. And we're going to be with him. What do we have to do at that point? Nothing. We've done it. We chose Jesus. When we see him coming down in the clouds in the sky, all of a sudden we're going to realize that those saints that are past that their bodies are going to be coming up out of the grave, going to be with Jesus. And as they pass us on the surface of this earth, we're going to be joined with them, and we're going to go up and we'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and we will be with Jesus, and forevermore we will be with Jesus. New heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, all perfect. There's some steps that go forth, but we as believers, as children of God, are secure in Jesus through all of the other events. Praise God for that. Brothers and sisters, I know you believe it. Can't emphasize it too much, and I, I listened to a great sermon by Brother Ron Crum, Tin Shanty, as he goes by on Facebook, and uh, it was about being ready we got to be ready and that's with a passion why it's for us but it's also for people we love who do not know jesus as lord and savior time is short and we can spend eternity without them or we can spend eternity with them if we if the holy spirit draws them and they accept jesus christ as lord and savior Thank you so much for listening, and let you and I commit to living a life that others can see that we've been with Jesus and that he's living in us. 
And let's don't miss an opportunity that the Holy Spirit gives us and leads us in to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you and God bless you.